I think someone needs to call 911 for Bobby. Amen. Have yeah. <laughs> Bobby, boy, you, you look good. You look good. You're well provided for protection. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. You have a mask everywhere except on your face. Amen. <laughs> As we begin our service today, uh, uh, the worship team has a video. It's a news release to start our worship. So I just need everyone to stand and let's see where the Lord leads us. In a statement released today, scientists have announced that based on their research, they have concluded that God is a myth. Let's get moving to the Lord. Come 
Thank you. Praise team, worship team, wonderful. Kyle, that was just absolutely amazing leading us. Praise God. Let's be seated, if you will. I'm going to ask Miss Irene, our Stephen leader, to give us our invocation. As you know, on the second Sunday of each month, we ask one of our amazing Stephen leaders to come and pray for us. And we remind you on that Sunday, we have a new bulletin board once again in the narthex to my left out there uh, that represents the Stephen ministry. If you know of somebody that could use some extra loving care, somebody doesn't have to even be in our church, somebody just has a need, you call us, let us know. And Miss Irene will be here afterwards if anybody would like to talk to her. Irene? Before we pray, repeat after me. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. I am strong and courageous. I am strong and courageous. Let us pray. Lord, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you are powerful and mighty, and wherever we go, you are with us. We welcome you here today to be with us, to be strong. On bended knees, as we pray, hear our prayers, Lord, Answer them. We know that you are faithful. And as we stand strong for your word, the truth of your word, strengthen us. Help us to reflect you with everyone that we meet. Give us opportunities today when we leave here to help others. Open our eyes so that we can see where the needs are. We ask you, Lord, to pour out your blessing upon this congregation, all three services and all the activities that are going on, all those who serve you in the chancel and other areas of this facility. We ask you to send your angels to guard every entrance, every exit, and that nothing dark or negative come near us. Help us always to be aware of our friends, our neighbors, our sisters and brothers' needs, and to meet them the best we can. With your help, anything is possible. Amen. We love you, Father, and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you also, Andy and Lori, uh, leaders of our worship team and the wonderful group you have. And Kyle, again, that was just fantastic. Just just great. Praise the Lord. I'm going to um, ask the children, do we have any little ones? I never know Sunday to Sunday if we have any little ones here. Do we have some little ones? Let's do our story now so they can go on to Sunday school. And then we've got some announcements. And uh, Brother Ray's going to come in a little bit to share a thank you after the men's retreat. Good to see you guys. Come on up, Denasia. All right. All righty. All righty. All righty. Thank you, Ian, for covering us today. Hey, darling. Good to see you. Come on over here if you'd like to join us. Good to see you. Hey, Dylan, come on up. All righty. You can sit right here if you'd like to. Next to the candy. <laughs> That's a good spot. 
It's a good spot. Hey, Dylan. We got to put our hands up in the air and say, long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River. Reverend Bullywink Bullfrog, what's the bullfrog say? <laughs> Dylan, what's, uh, Declan, what's the bullfrog say? You remember? That's right, exactly. Well, the bullfrog, they were talking to all the critters, and they were talking about the same thing we're going to talk about today in the idea of the church. After Jesus died and was, arose again on Easter, he began to appear to his different disciples, and he had a new body. That's absolutely amazing. And he just came right into the, the wall there. It was just amazing. And Thomas, one of his disciples, didn't believe because he didn't see him to begin with, but when he saw him, he fell down on his knees and he worshiped him. He said, my Lord and my God. So as Bully Wink is telling this story, old Tom Kitty Cat, what's a kitty cat sound like? Anybody know? Meow. Old Tom Kitty Cat, he said, you know, I heard once my great, 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 great grandpa said that he was there and he was called Tom, old Tom Kitty Cat, because he was the kitty cat of, of Thomas the disciple. Bullywing said, is that true? And he said, well, I don't know. He said, that's the story that's passed down in our family. And he said that he remembered seeing also Jesus for the first time. And what do you think old Tom Kitty Cat said way back then? Exactly. <laughs> Cats always say the same thing, don't they? Meow. Well, it also meant the same thing, my Lord and my God. I mean, it was amazing. And so all the critters begin to sing, and you know this song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But they sang in cat language. Can you do that with me now? Can you do that? Congregation, can you help us out? Meow, 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 I didn't know you could speak cat. Oh, that's so great. And you know what they gave all the critters? Kit Kats. Woo! Can you hold it for us? Yes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for Easter. And thank you for being our Lord and our God. And may all of God's people say, amen. Let's go to Sunday school, if you will. And we're going to have those who are going to make our announcements if they'll come forward at this time. Can you come down these big steps? Got the bully wink bullfrag bag. There you go. Ray, hold on just a second. I was going to do the announcements first, then have Ray come up. I don't see anybody giving the announcements. Right there you are, Ingrid. I didn't see you there. <laughs> Ingrid, let me, before you get started too, you know, we all, we said since COVID and we came back together many months ago now that if you have a birthday on Sunday that we would like to sing happy birthday to you. Coach Jones, birthday is today. Anybody else birthday today? Actually today? Well, you would not know John is 99 years old. I tell you, he holds his age very well. He's not, but I, he is, there is just there's no other man or woman in the church, and we all know this, that blesses us any more than John does as, as a family man and a, and a leader in our church. So let's sing happy birthday to him. Lori, can you help us out? Get us on key. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Ingrid, go ahead. What a wonderful way to start the day with that song this morning Amen. and all the energy here. God was very good this morning and mm. he's alive and well here. Mm. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Let me see. <clears throat> Tuesday morning Bible study will be held. Tuesday evening the Bible study will be held at 5 p.m. Tuesday at 6 p.m. is the SP. No, that was canceled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the SPRC meeting is not going to be on Tuesday. In the weekly calendar, there is a UMW executive meeting, but it will be next week, not this at 2 p.m. Those involved, please note that. Um, Scouts will be having their car wash on April 17th from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Advance Auto Parts, and we hope to all see you there. <clears throat> Next Sunday at 6.30 in the sanctuary, we will host the WCA prayer meeting. 
This will be live streamed on the Florida Chapter WCA page. It will be a time of worship, prayers, and devotion, including one from our pastor, president of Florida Chapter, Jay Thero, mm -hmm. will also be a speaker, uh, and it's open to all. WCA's global gathering is scheduled for May 1st. It's online only. This will be a simulcast, and we'll have an opportunity to hear some of the great leaders of this new global Methodist church who will be speaking. You will want to be a part of it. And you can register for the global gathering online at the WCA.org. Amen. Thank you. Have a great day. And too bad for the rain for the softball. I know. Game. I know. We're going to announce that. Let me go ahead and mention that since you said that as well, Ingrid. Uh, thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, we do have Marcel Santiago's uh, memorial service this afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock. And the plan was to have a reception at the ball field because of how much he loves softball afterwards. So we are praying. I mean, you know, I know it's supposed to rain, but we're just praying for God's miraculous touch. Can we all pray together that that goes well? And many of you will be back here, I know, for that. Thank you, Ingrid, for that very much. Uh, let me mention one other announcement that I, is very important, um, that when she lifted up, the uh, simulcast will be here at the church, uh, and you can register online or watch it online, but we're going to have it on the big screen uh, that Saturday, May the 1st, and I'd love to see all the chairpersons, is mainly the chairpersons, but everybody, it's open to you, and it's a very uh, minute registration fee, and these are going to be the leaders of the new Methodist movement, so you'll want to, to be here if you possibly can. They're great speakers, even if you can only be there part of the day, so please consider that uh, or watch it online as well, but I think simulcast, it's something about about being here um, will just be a blessing. Now, we had a great men's retreat. Brother Ray, come on up. And uh, he is our chairperson. He did a tremendous job. He followed the Holy Spirit all weekend and, and led us in a variety of ways. It was just great. And uh, Ray just wants to give a thank you and share a few words uh, about our men's retreat. Ray? Y'all better take a look at this. This don't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> You need to be at the mic so they can hear you, good guy. <laughs> I'm slow. I'm old, too. I want to thank every man that had the courage to come for the weekend at this church and celebrate God. Amen. Uh, you know, God gives us treasures mm -hmm. to hold for a while. Mm -hmm. And this weekend was not only a blessing, but a treasure. Amen. Uh, we had some kind of New York, or not, no, he wasn't New York. Where you at North, up in North? Where are you from? Chicago? Yeah, you. Michigan, Michigan. Northern Michigan. Oh, that's what I thought. I knew it was in the North. <laughs> <laughs> they're all the same a up there, right? <laughs> a, southern, a Southern boys can't understand what they say. You know? <laughs> Oh. We got jokes too. Uh, nevertheless, I got some. I gave. A, <laughs> I gave him a participation trophy. And God says, "Ray, that's not right." I said, "But God, He was doing it, and we were winning it." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, "Why should I give him?" And He says. Even Northerners can win God. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> so, some of y'all stand up that went to the men's retreat that's got their little. This is a winner for God award, okay? <laughs> I, got, uh, I got a few more. <laughs> huh? You get one. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say thank you. Oh, yes. We had the, the thing. We usually go off somewhere, spend the night, talk a lot, and be, uh, be thankful that we're in the presence of God. But we came here. Mm -hmm. We sat down. Mm -hmm. We were home. Yes. We said a prayer, and the God blessed us. And I tell you, Mr. Jim Potts gave the best talk Amen. I've heard in years. Thank you, Jim. 
Amen. From the first moment mm. till the last thing, even last night. Mm -hmm. Oh, you was preaching too. I forgot about that. He, he, <laughs> last, he preached last night. Uh, he, he, uh, we, we did meet God in this building. And he's here today. Amen. Ray. And I want to thank all of y'all. Yes. Next time, yes. I'd like to see, we got 42, which I thought was really good. Yes, we do. I want to see 140. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And I appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not to be outdone, Ray gave me one. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Going on my shelf, Ray. Going on my shelf. I got it right here. Right here. <laughs> what a blessing. Uh, it was a great blessing, and that'll be our first praise report. It's just uh, fantastic, and as he shared, and Jim, when he shared, it just opened it up. Ray felt led of the Holy Spirit and asked the different men to, because most of us guys don't know each other, and at, that was just powerful. So it was great. Brother Bud just took care of the food, did a tremendous job, as Ray said, and we're hoping, ladies, I want to challenge you. Uh, as we go into the summer and maybe into the fall, if you'd like to do an in-house women's retreat, we will, we will support you in any way we can. We know that if you put that together, there you go. Um, you probably don't want us there, but we'll stay away from you. How's that? But we will support you and, uh, just that would be fantastic. So let's pray about that. Amen. Amen. Well, let's turn to our prayer concerns, if you will. And then Brother Bobby, and I don't know if we can have him pray with that coat on, but we'll do the best we can. Um, if you will look at, uh, if you're looking at your calendar of activities, if you'll turn it over, it's got our prayer concerns. And we do have an update there. Uh, we mentioned about Marcel, so keep the family in your prayers. Corrine Booz, we've been praying every week for her. Uh, remember, she's been struggling with dementia. She was in the hospital and then at Life Care, and she fell. We heard this last night, and she broke her clavicle. So please, uh, just bombard heaven for her. She does have a person coming from up north uh, en route, and uh, they're going to live with her full time. And that's going to take care of her. So we're so thankful for that. Pat Martin, one of the dear men of our church, is in the hospital right now. And he is going to go on dialysis. And um, so we just need to be praying for Pat and Joyce. I want to continue to remember Eliana, uh, the little baby we've all been praying for and her dear family. And uh, she uh, had an MRI again this Friday. So praying that the Lord will give wisdom and discernment with the results uh, there. And then... Uh, next Sunday night at 6.30, um, we're ha hosting that service. The president of the Florida chapter WCA is going to speak. So if you want an update of the denomination, please consider being here. Uh, our worship team will be leading us, um, as uh, Ingrid shared a few moments ago. But it is a prayer service. And I want to share uh, in my few moments before we pray about revival, about the revival that influenced me that goes all the way back to Asbury in 1950 before the 1970 revival, that many of you may not know those stories. And so uh, it's going to be a wonderful evening. And so I hope you'll mark that on your calendar. And again, that will be live streamed as well on their page. And so we just need to be praying uh, about that. If you have your own personal prayer concerns, if you'll jot them down, Bobby, if you'll come at this time and uh, when you leave today, you can drop them in the offering plate and then they will go into our uh, prayer uh, emails. Bobby, if you'll lead us to the Lord, please. Good morning and I'd like to welcome all of you once again uh, to the house of the Lord. If you can just look past my coat <laughs> and just say a little prayer, we'll, we'll get through it. I want to say thank you to Schrossberger for my coat, <laughs> my new designer. We're going to critique a few things, but I think we'll be okay. <laughs> but, but as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want you to keep those names that mm. Pastor already mentioned. Mm. To us, little Ellie, mm -hmm. we had prayed for her, mm -hmm. and she has made some miraculous turnaround. Yes, yes, she has. Or when the doctor says no, mm -hmm. boy, our Savior says yes. Amen, amen. And she is making good progress, so yes, we Lord. want to keep her uh, mm -hmm. in those names that mm -hmm. that we lifted up. Those pe those ones that are closer to you, keep mm -hmm. those names close to your heart. We'll keep him in our thoughts and our prayers as we lift up the Lord today. Amen. 
Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Father, another Sunday. <coughs> Father, you allow us to get up this morning. Yes, Lord. For those that didn't get up, Father, you allow us once again mm. to get up still yes, yes, yeah. in our right mind. Thank you, Lord. Father, we mm. still have our health, mm. yeah. our strength. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, that comes from you. Mm -hmm. Father, we can't thank you enough mm -hmm. for all that you've done. Mm -hmm. Father, you gave your son, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Died for all of our sins. Mm -hmm. All of our unwillingness to say yes to you. Thank you, Lord. But, Father, anyway, he died so we can come together as a Amen. church. Amen. Amen. As sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Oh, to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, look on us today. Thank you, Lord. Look on our nation. Mm -hmm. Look on those that are in need. Mm -hmm. Father, they're calling on you. But little do they know. Yes, Lord. Father, you've yes, answered Lord. the prayer already. Already, Lord Jesus. Father, you've answered. Yes, you have. You have. Before they even mm -hmm. can get it all together. Father, mm -hmm. those names that are on our prayer concern. Father, all of us mm -hmm. that are in the sanctuary right now. Father, our names could have been on that list. Yes, yes it could But be. you spared us. Yes, you have. Father, you redirected our sickness. And most importantly, today, Father, you made old death behave. Amen. Amen. What a gift. Mm -hmm. And, Father, we can never repay. Mm -hmm. But today, we're going to give a little glory today. Yes. We're going to yes. give a little thanks. Yes. Yes. For all yes. that you've done. Yes. Father, we're thanking you in advance Thank you, for Jesus. what you're going to do. Thank you, Jesus. Father, look on our church today, this service. Yes. yes. Everyone that is in attendance. Mm. Father, those that are online. Thank you, Lord. Father, remember Thank you, Lord. those. Thank you, Lord. That gone Thank before you, us. Mm -hmm. Father, we say a prayer for those yes. on bending yes. knees. Yes, yes. yes. It's yes. something yes. about being on bending knees that Amen. gives us a little closer to you. Amen. It does. Mm. Mm. Father, the service this afternoon. Father, remember the Santiago family. Karen, family and all her family. Her son Michael, mm. Michaela. Mm. Oh, Father, be Lord, with them. Oh, oh, Father, we know they're gonna miss their dad. Daddy. She's gonna miss her husband. Mm. But Father, you answered Marcel's call. Yes, you did. Father, he looked to you, mm. and he's called on you more more mm. times than once. Mm. Father, you answered his call. Thank you, Jesus. Father, where he was hurting. Thank you, you gave him comfort. Yes. Father, yes, where yes. he was fighting, the battle was already won. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Father, I feel your presence right yes. now. Yes, yes. In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we claim a victory Victory today. In Jesus' name. Father, strengthen them mm. today and in days to come. Yes. Father, they're going to call on him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, he may not answer. Mm. But he's looking down on him yes, right now. Yes, he is now. Amen. Father, he's a child of God. Amen. He accepted you. Yes, he did. And you said in your word that those that call on my name shall yes. be saved. Amen. Father, Amen. we trust in and believe in today Amen. that Amen. that's where he's are. Yes. <laughs> Father, look on all of us. Mm. Father, hear our cry. Father, answer Thank our prayers. Jesus. Father, you allow us to cast all our cares at your mm. feet. And for that, Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all that you've done. Thank, thank you, you for making a way out of nowhere. Amen. Father, thank you for being our guidance on our way to church. Mm -hmm. mm. And Father, as our praise team comes, mm -hmm. and Father, as we continue to worship, mm -hmm. Father, let your mercy and grace be all over the house. Thank you, Lord. Father, we're going to get some glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of some worship today Father what the devil meant for evil we're going to get a hallelujah out of it Amen Father be with our team today as we worship Father as those that come to the altar mm -hmm. as it is always open mm -hmm. Father it was at the cross mm -hmm. Where we found our Savior. At the cross. It was at the cross. Yes, yes. Where we was all forgiven. Yes. Father, you died for all of our, our sins. sins. So all of us 
can live life more abundantly. Father, we pray a prayer in faith today mm. and in truth. Yes. And may all of God's people say, amen. As the team is gathering here, may we stand. Who's reading our scripture today? Are there? In Wesley. Wesley? Come on up, Wesley, and read the word for us. Y'all remain standing in honor to the Lord. You can stand right here, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today's scripture is about um, John 8, 38 through 39. The man who, from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. Mm. So the men went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Wes. Thank you. Let's remain standing, and our altar is open. Our team will be up here if you'd like to be anointed with oil. I really would love to see someone come up again and pray for the uh, Santiago family. And um, we had a beautiful group, and uh, don't feel obligated to do that because everybody will be here here in a few hours. But if someone would like to stand in the gap for them as the praise team leads us in other prayer concerns, just come and bring them to the altar, okay?
Father, it's, it's because you live. Father, we can face all of our fears. It's because you live, all of our fears are gone. Father, you hold our life, our future. Father, we know you're the author and the finish of our faith in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you all say amen? Amen. You may be seated. Worship team, that was wonderful. Thank you. Ronnie and Frank and the whole team and all the musicians, fantastic, fantastic. You're in for a blessing today. Those of you that did not get a chance to hear uh, Reverend Mike Needhart, Mike is a, a newly retired minister in our area. He's from Michigan, as uh, Brother Ray tried to say uh, earlier there, you know. And but you know, then Georgia, there's a long road between Georgia and Michigan, you know, there. And. <laughs> 
<laughs> but he, uh, he just blessed us. He was his career. He was a police officer, an investigator. And in the last 10 years, a United Methodist pastor. And he and his dear wife, Lynette, have moved here. And uh, we're just delighted. They're about to head back up for the summer months. So we're going to miss them. But what a blessing for us. He's going to give us our message today and also at the 11 o'clock uh, hour. And we are going to be uploaded the service. It is not online at the present time just because we had some difficulties this week. But it will be uploaded if you want to uh, get a recap of the service also a little bit later on. So let me have a prayer for Mike and then we'll turn it over to him. Heavenly Father, thank you again for bringing Mike and Lynette our way and what they have done for us in so many ways. What a blessing. He was so much fun to listen to uh, over the weekend. I know it's going to be a blessing for our church, but also just the powerful impact of his stories and sharing the Jesus stories. We just thank you that he's part of our family now. So, Lord, we just ask your blessings and may all of God's people say, let's welcome Brother Mike. Please come. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, Cousin Joe Nyhart is here. Cousin Joe, I, we must be like four generations removed from each other, but he's still my cousin, and he lives in Hernando. And so we've had a chance to visit. Uh, you, know, you know what the season has been like to see anybody or do anything. But anyways, Cousin Joe Nyhart, thank you for being here. Um, one of the, the places I have to visit is what he shared with me in our ancestry uh, is a place in um, Nyhart Cemetery in, is it Utah? No. Montana. 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 Yeah, there's, there's three Nyhart cemeteries in the United States, and the one I really want to visit is the one that's up in Montana. The town is called Nyhart, Montana, and the cemetery is named after Nyhart. So um, there, there's a bunch of us out there. Uh, Google the name sometime, and you'll probably see John G. Nyhart and some others that are uh, famous authors. Um, during this weekend, uh, we did have uh, um, a lot of tears, a lot of laughter, a lot of laughter. Um, can't remember when I've had so much fun, and, uh, but I can't remember a lot of the time anyway. <laughs> uh, Ray was gracious. Uh, you, know, you know Ray, where are you at? Oh, he, he darts in here and takes jabs at me and, and then leaves, you know? <laughs> Do you know how many times we had to take the microphone away from him, tell him to shut up? So you just remind him, his middle name is Shut Up. <laughs> so, um, uh, Pastor, we, we ran into this the week, this weekend as there were stories that were told that you, that you told that you just don't remember. That's true, isn't it? I mean, you didn't remember taking me over to um, St. Augustine no, to the medieval torture chamber and then talk to me about chicken wings. You didn't remember that story, did you? I didn't think you did, but, but I was able to share that with them. Uh, I love spaghetti and meatballs, but that's a story for another day. Um, uh, he told us, do you remember the story about Mahatma Gandhi? No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't remember the story about Mahatma Gandhi, but do you remember who he is? Uh, he was a very famous, um, um, peaceful man, did everything in peace, um, didn't believe in violence at all, and he really impacted the world in his kindness and in his, but he had a terrible diet. You know, he was, he was always um, uh, eating different kinds of foods and not eating food at all, so you didn't know this. He had really bad, bad breath. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't think you knew this part. So the other thing that he had is he walked everywhere in bare feet. So his feet were calloused. You know what I'm saying? So pastor explained to us that he's a super callous mystic hexpihalidosis. You guys remember this? You didn't remember that story, did you? I didn't think you did. He had a lot of stories he just didn't remember. I'm going to help him remember. So I said to introduce myself, and I, I got to uh, church, uh, first full-time appointment. It was a little town called Boyne City, and they had a gal there, her name was Flo Davis, and she was 100 years old. 
and uh, Sharp's attacks. She lived in a house just down from uh, the church. And uh, they said, please go visit Flo. So uh, I did and went with the church secretary who's just, you know, lovely. Those lovely people come into your life and they never leave. She was one of those. And so we got to see Flo. And we visited and we visited and we visited. It was just very sweet. We walked back to the church. And a couple days later, uh, one of the gals came into the church and said, did you see Flo? And I said, well, yeah. Um, she said that you weren't very tall. <laughs> All right. Uh, she said you weren't very good looking. <laughs> so, okay. So Flo got moved to uh, long-term care just after we got there. And so my wife, Lynette, and I, um, went up uh, to see her um, and said, what is this? Am I tall or what? Uh, am I good looking? What, what gives? She looked at me and said, you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I wanted to tell you, thank you so much for the invitation to be a part of this weekend. Um, you probably don't remember this part of the invitation either, but um, he, he said, would you consider doing this? And I said, sure, I'll consider doing it. And then he got these sad little eyes and said, we're desperate. <laughs> oh, you just, you see his little eyes when they're sad like that? You know, he's, of course I'll help. Of course I will. So I'm this person who isn't nearly tall enough, carries a few extra pounds, is likable, um, but desperately needed. <laughs> We've told stories all weekend long. That was the whole idea of the weekend was, is telling Jesus stories. Sometimes it's not easy to remember a scripture like we have on, the, on uh, Luke 8, 38 and 39, but you could remember the story. So what I re really encouraged uh, everybody to do, what was encouraged was to remember the Jesus stories. Remember the Jesus stories. And I told the story of a little girl that came into my life that never seen her since. She made such an impact in, in uh uh, difficult things in her life and how much she loved me, and I still miss this kid. And here's what we shared over the weekend. Um, God's grace is not fragile. I want you to know that because I think sometimes we get somewhere and we feel bad about something in us, and, and that drives us. That moves us. That, that puts up a door that you, Jesus needs to break down. God's grace isn't fragile. If you're just coming back or somebody needs to hear that, you remember it and you can say to somebody, God's grace isn't fragile. So we talked about prayer a lot. We did a lot of praying. And I, and I think that that really helped us share our tears and our laughter. Um, one of the things I shared in prayer is uh, your name is a household name in heaven. Your name is a household name in heaven. And I want you to remember that because it's going to come up again. Your name is a household name and when you pr in heaven. And when you pray for somebody else, their name is now a household name in heaven. That's why we pray for each other. Thank you for the amen. Would you raise your hand when people need to amen? So you, didn't, you weren't very good at that over the weekend. So, so that's, that's right. People laugh more than they, than they amen. But we had a, a wonderful weekend that way. We told the Jesus stories. Uh, we shared Jesus stories. Um, we shared stories uh, about um, from everybody. We had a, a Larry. Is it Larry that did the testimony? Yeah. yeah it just we were just blessed by that, um, and everybody shared. And we took extra time in doing that. Um, what I learned in listening to all those people are there are so many people that are here because somebody from here invited them. I mean, that was powerful. I'm a new kid on the block. I don't know a lot of folks here. Um, uh, I'm beginning to learn them a little bit better. See, you've got name tags on. Really be able to put a, uh, really nice to put a name with a mask. <laughs> you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> so we were sharing Jesus stories and how to remember them. And if you just remember them as a Jesus story. This is a story that, um, it, it's really an interesting story because at the end of it, uh, I call them summary statements. There's a way when Luke writes that he summarizes um, things and just brings you up to speed. And it could be a paragraph. One of the famous ones is after Jesus had been at the temple and he went home and he grew in favor of God and men. And that was a summary statement that took you from 13 years old to 30 years old. 
And you just knew that. The end of this scripture has one. Uh, Jesus tells this young man uh, to go back home. Tell what God did for you. It's interesting. I was thinking as we were talking about the men's group this morning uh, and thinking about it. That's what they're going to do now. You know what? They're, they're going to go home and tell people about it. They're going to tell people about Jesus. They're going to tell about their tears and their, and their laughter. There's some stories I hope they never tell again. <laughs> so um, more, I'm more of a storyteller than a preacher. And uh, kind of just that's what happened. I started writing stories to my grandchildren. That's how it got started. And I thought, well, this really makes a good story. So this story in Luke is, is uh, the story of uh, a man who was uh, left uh, in the cemeteries to die. He couldn't be chained. He couldn't be held. He was, he was wild and crazy. And, and there's a lot of mental illness that we can describe that way. And, and we can now say, oh, this is mental illness, and we can help treat that. He didn't have any of that. The whole story is really interesting because what happens is, is the day earlier, Jesus had been in Galilee and said, it's time to go to the other side of the lake. Let's go over to the Gezerines. Did I say that right? That's one of those words. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those words. You know, do you say it right? Is it Generines? Is it Gezerines? I don't know. It's the area of the Decapolis. And um, I had a, an author uh, wrote one of his stories that this young man who, who went back uh, and told about what happened to him was probably the emphasis for when Jesus fed the 4,000. If you remember the story of feeding the 4,000, he went to the area of the Decapolis and uh, making some really direct inferences to this man went back and told his story and it brought 4,000 men out to hear what Jesus was doing. And I thought, well, that's, a, that's really a nice connection. So the story is, is they leave, and in the middle of the night when Jesus is trying to sleep, there was a storm. We just lived through one, something like that, pretty loud and noisy. Uh, and he's sound asleep in the boat, and, and everyone says, Jesus, do you care about us? Do you care? Um, and so uh, they wake Jesus up, and in and and other places he said, you have little faith. And I thought, you have little faith. I always wondered what that sounded like when he said it. It's one of those ones where when you say it, it could be used a different emotion every time. I always thought it was kind of a very nice, um, maybe I won't use that. Um, I'm under tall, you know, <laughs> so I've got to come off that thing. Um, it's, it's one of those things where he'd say, and I always thought it was tender when he said it, you little faith, oh, you little faith, don't you get it yet? And it calms the storm. And it's so calm, they can't sail anymore, they got to row. And uh, anyway, they are, and the apostles that are in the boat um, go to the other side of the lake. And uh, Easter week when uh, I was able to be with other men and we played the disciples or the apostles in the upper room, we had Jesus there. And um, I, I uh, thought to myself at the time, you know, uh, we've been in the boat with Jesus, you know, we've been in the same boat with Jesus. They come to the other side of the shore, and there's a man waiting there, and you remember the story really well, is that Jesus comes ashore, the demons scream and screech and said, you're the son of God, what are you going to do to us, don't be mean to us. I mean, they're demons, come on. But um, this is what they, they scream to him, and of course Jesus then casts the demons out of the man, going to the pigs. The man is in his right mind, uh, and he gets to go back and see his family. The story I want to share is, is I wonder what it would have been like when he did go back and he told the story. When my wife Lynette, she'll be here at the 11 o'clock service, when my wife Lynette and I um, talked this story over, um, she said, a guy's got to have a name. You know, many people were not, their names weren't recorded because they make shrines to them and all those kinds of things. So this person isn't named. We thought the story told better by giving him a name, and we gave him the name Bartholomew. So this is the story of Bartholomew alongside the shore. Through his eyes. As he's been healed, and he's telling the story to others. The evil that was in me knew who it was before I knew. They screeched. Son of God! A voice I'd never heard before. Be kind to us. Jesus spoke my name. Did you know I hadn't heard my name in a long time? Jesus spoke to me. 
I can't tell you much about the demons and uh, the, the uh, uh, pigs that, that uh, went into the lake. I, I just can't tell you much about that. I just remember I wanted to go with Jesus. I'd been in the cemetery there alongside the lake. People chained me there so that I would die. Jesus came ashore and he healed me. And you know, it was the apostles that uh, when they got there with a the boat, they had extra clothes. I, I think Peter helped me and, and uh, uh, Matthew. And they got fresh clothes on me. They, they cleaned me up. They helped, my hair was so matted. They helped me clean up my hair. And uh, um, they helped me. I wanted to go with Jesus. He said, go home and tell them the story. Jesus left, and I'm on that beach, and I'm clothed, and in my right mind, and I'm afraid to leave the beach. Would people recognize me? Would they know it's me? Would they hate me as soon as they saw me? Would they run? That's what they used to do. I knew I had to go. I was clothed and in my right mind, and I hurried home to town because I wanted to go see my family. I haven't seen them and talked to them in years. I hurried past people, and maybe they saw me, maybe they didn't, maybe they recognized me, maybe they didn't. I got to my home. I banged on the door, and I stepped in, and I said, Mother, it's me, it's your son, Bartholomew. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt you anymore. I don't hurt people anymore. You can trust me. You can come out. We can talk. I've been healed by the rabbi, the rabbi from Galilee, the rabbi from Nazareth, the rabbi the teacher healed me. Mom stepped out. We held each other a long time. We got caught up on family things. The tears flowed. She said, you know, you're going to have to go tell your father. And, I, and uh, if people don't know that, in, in Jewish custom, what, what, I was no longer in the family. I'd been thrown away. I was left to die. And I had to go see my father that did all those things. He's north of town about a mile. You'll go out there. It'll be easy to find. He's working on a project. Go see your father. I was afraid again. I had to go back through town. I had to go see my father. People recognized me some this way, and they kept their distance, and I kept walking. I just kept walking, and I found my father. I said, Father, it's me. It's Bartholomew. I'm healed. I am healed. The rabbi healed me. The teacher healed me. Father, please know me. Know that I'm your son. I'll do anything. I'll make up anything, any damages I did, anything that happened. I will make up to you. I'll make it up to the the community. I just need to have you know that I'm back and be accepted by you. I'm Bartholomew, your son. Took dad a few minutes to let that sink in. If you're going with me, pick up the tools and follow me. I did. As we walked home, we saw a lot of people, and uh, I was walking just a little bit behind my, my father, and my father would say, this is my son Bartholomew, the rabbi healed him. As he got further and further along, I got to walk closer and closer to my dad, to my father. This is my son Bartholomew, the rabbi healed him. What I, I just told everybody that story. And I went home, and I worked in the community. I worked in the community for a long time, and I helped people. I put things back. Uh, I helped with anything I could help with. And my father came to me one day and said, you need to go see Elizabeth. Do you remember who she is? And I do. It was a, uh, a lady across town, and uh, the father said, she needs to talk to you. And then the father said, do you remember finding loaves of bread that you lived on when you were tied in the tombs. Elizabeth made that, that bread. 
She's the one that fed you. So I went to see Elizabeth, and I sat with Elizabeth, and um, I said, uh, I'm, I'm here, uh, it's Bartholomew, and a very frail lady invited me in. She'd become very ill. And we talked for a little bit, and she looked at me, and she said, do you think Jesus can help me? That was our weekend. That was our whole weekend. Jesus can help you. Jesus can help you. Um, perhaps as, and, and we're going to offer an invitation. Uh, I especially want to offer it to men. There's sometimes it just something happens in your lives where it marks a day and you want to remember it. United Methodist Church uh, has a wonderful tradition of remembering your baptism. And you have those times when you remember Jesus Christ came into your life, and it's a powerful thing in your life. And, and this weekend was that kind of a weekend. So I'm go we're going to offer, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, pastor will listen to your confessions. Uh, if you've never uh, been baptized, he'll baptize you. If you just want to remember your baptism, you come up here uh, and uh, receive uh, baptism, uh, the renewal of your baptism from pastor. And that's not even the right word either. But, but I was, what I was wondering was is, did you see yourself anywhere in the story? Maybe you were that person that's sitting on the edge of the lake and you can see Jesus coming. Maybe you're that person. Maybe you're that person that helped clothe somebody. Maybe you're that person standing on the beach and I'm afraid to go anywhere else. What will people say about me? What will they think about me? And you garner up the courage and you go because the rabbi healed you? Are you that person that needs forgiveness? Are you need that person that steps in family or someplace else? Do you need that kind of forgiveness? Jesus does that. Do you see yourself in that part of the story? Maybe you see yourself as part of the story when you're walking with your father and the father says, this is my child. The lamb healed him. Maybe you're that one that's walking with the Father and he whispers oh so gently, this is my child. The Lamb of God healed him. He's my child. I want you to know you belong. You belong. We've had a lot of people talk about their varied experiences in their lives. Some I'll never repeat. Some I don't want to see again. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I've seen too much. Um, so at this time, we're going to offer an invitation, Pastor. Um, and if you're at that moment in your life when you just want to remember uh, Jesus, then we're going to ask you to come. We'd like the praise team, the worship team, to come back forward, if they will, for the music. And uh, Brother Mike and I talked about this. We have a chalice if any of you'd like to renew your baptismal vows, Mike, if you want to join me down there, I've got a second chalice. A yeah. Um, and as you know, we don't rebaptize, but we renew the baptismal vows. We did this years ago. So everybody's going to be standing in a minute. The altar is open. If our, our prayer folks will go ahead and come on back up, um, I'll have a mask on down there. Um, and any of you, and maybe all of you, might like to come up and we would just say we renew your baptismal vows. Just sprinkle a couple of the holy water on your forehead. Then you could kneel in prayer or go right back to your seats. And uh, we would love to have you do that. And let's hold the candles out till we get finished, guys. So y'all just stay right there uh, for that. Because we want to give anybody a chance to come and pray. And this isn't just for the, the men at the retreat. Any man or any woman, just anybody that's here, as Mike said, we would love for you to feel part of the family uh, of God. Mike, I'm going to pour some in a chalice so that we can be on both sides there for anybody that comes. And then at the close, if we can uh, um, offer that to you too as well, if you would like that. Just a little splash. That's why he doesn't remember some stories. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all stand, if you will. And then just come down the aisle. You can, you know, social distance. Mike and I have the mask to, to make sure you feel comfortable. And we'd like to sprinkle you clean 
in Jesus' name. Just come down two aisles here, guys. Remember your baptism in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
be seated a moment. Brother Mike's going to give us a closing thought, and then Bobby will lead us in prayer. Let me remind you, we are, as you all know, a prayerful church. There are prayer quilt out there to sign, prayer wall to sign your own personal prayers. Or if you have someone that could use a prayer bear, you can take one of those home with you as well. Mike? Uh, thank you again, and thank you, for, thank you for laughing at jokes that maybe weren't all that funny. Uh, <laughs> appreciate that. It kind of gives me some encouragement. Uh, my wife will hate you because I'll keep trying those jokes on her. <laughs> She'll be here at 11. <laughs> Friday night was the night we prayed. We had communion Saturday night, and that was very powerful in our life. But we, we prayed on Friday night. And I left them with these thoughts, and I want to leave these thoughts with you. Don't pray like your life depends on it. Mm. Pray like some kid's life depends on it because it does. It does. Mm. Pray mm. like that. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Bobby? Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to come together in church and all of your children in Christ. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For all that you've done. Thank you for your blessings. Mm. Father, the song say amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Father, be gracious. Be upon us. Father, let your Holy Spirit be all around us. Father, as we go our separate ways, Father, we ask that you allow us to put on the whole armor of God mm. for all to see. Father, until we meet again in this place, Amen. may all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Let's rise. May the Lord bless you. Turn and wave to your neighbor. We'll see you next Sunday morning.